So once again, welcome to the Discount Party Podcast, you know, the uh, the dollar store version. Yeah. Today, we're going to talk about a special manga that finished last year, 2016, aka the Year of Hatred. I apologize for my voice because I'm still pretty sick. But we're going to talk about Toriko. And with me today, I have uh, Mr. Falcon Punch 996 and Lunar Spiral 1127. Yeah, Toriko. I guess we'll start with something basic, like how did you guys discover the series? I'll go last because I want to rest my voice. Somebody go. <laughs> oh my god, me. Okay, well, I guess it's because I heard about Toriko. I guess it was around the time I was in college or something. And, well, I've heard a lot of good things about it, and I just wanted to read it to see how it is, and I guess the more I got into it, the more I really enjoyed the series. I especially loved the Rigo Mammoth arc, the Ice Hell arc. Cooking Fest was awesome. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then, and of course, I even checked out the anime. Big fucking mistake, that's for sure. I mean, well, to be fair, the anime wasn't bad. It's just once they got to the Cooking Fest arc, it just... Just one. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, see, back in the day, I used to be a massive, like, One Piece fan. Like, huge. It was, like, my number one favorite series of all time. Nothing could touch it. So, one day, there was a crossover of Toriko, and I was like, oh, who are these characters? And I kind of found out, like, oh, these are other Shonen Jump characters. Like, it was a crossover and all that shit. And I watched that episode... I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with Toriko? I'm probably never going to read this series. It's fucking weird. Because, <laughs> because it was just like, you know, there was this like, big pig thing that was on, like, had grill on its back, and then there was Sunny, and, like, Sunny was just weird. It was like some guy with rainbow hair, hair just flying around. I'm like, that's... <laughs> like, it was really the greatest first impression. But, like, a year later, I heard people talking about it, since I think at that point, Toriko was... Probably in the Gourmet Pyramid arc, and people were like talking about it. And I'm like, you know what? I'll just check it out because, uh, you know, I was pretty much up to date with everything I was, uh, you know, reading and watching at the time. Like all the Shonen series I was watching and reading. So I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll check it out. I'll read the manga because I heard the anime was pretty bad. So I'm like, I read the manga, I read the first chapter, saw the Gara Rock Gator. I'm like, you know what? This is some good shit. And then at first, you know, like, I thought the whole concept of food was kind of lame. But then when I thought about it, I'm like, you know what, it's pretty cool. I like food. It's a series about food. And men hunt food. I'm like, yes. So then I read it. And then, uh, it finished. And I was Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I remember how I came across Tortico. But it, it was actually, um, I was watching a person's video. And they were saying some things about it. And that's kind of what caught my interest, because I, I think I was still in, like, still pretty heavy on the Fist of the North Star phase, like, after finishing it. <clears throat> so I was looking for stuff that was kind of similar, and I've been hearing a little bit here and there that... That supposedly, like, Toriko had a lot of similarities to Fist, or at least, you know, if you, if you look deep enough. And then the one video that I saw is kind of, like, what sold me on it. Uh, the YouTube video was actually from someone we know. Oh. He's in the Phantom group. Can you guess who it was? Oh, wait, was it me? Yeah. Oh, oh. okay, I think I remember that video. Yeah, that was before, like, yeah. we talked, so... Yeah, back in those days. My scrub days on YouTube when I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> actually, I, I think around those times, it was like I was trying to keep my YouTube channel a secret. So I'd be in my room and be like, hey guys, it's Mr. Falcon Punch. <laughs> yeah, before the oh, porn yeah. started. <laughs> this... Oh, yeah. Well, what the fuck over? And... Yeah, it was uh, this video, I think. The uh, Manly Man of Anime and Manga. Because you described yeah, that zebra uh, being similar to Raul. Yeah. So Special... He had a big horse. Yep. And then, um... <clears throat> I'm trying to remember, like, my experience of reading it, or, like, how I first started. <clears throat> I know when I caught up, it was in, the manga was in the 4B start. But upon reading it, it was actually making me think of a lot of different things. I don't know, I, w I was just giving it a chance with the whole, like, food gimmick. The thing that caught my attention was later on with some of the subtle Fist of the North Star references, the fact that 
you know, the four adopted uh, boys uh, trained by this one elderly man. The fact that Torticle's fighting cell is kind of suited to the South Star. Everything used to be in a, it used to be in a post-apocalyptic setting until recently where the Gourmet Age, we brought everything back into a stable society. And of course, the whole, you know, like, uh, manliness that there was to it and the savagery. Yeah, I remember watching the anime, you know, wondering whether to get, watch it or not. Because uh, I stumbled upon it on Best Buy for like $24, $25 for like the first set. It just barely came out like that that same weekend. So I bought it, gave it a chance, and I decided hey, I'll, I'll just watch it anyways as I read it. And yeah, I was noticing the differences between the two. But I, I'm, I know people don't like the where, how the anime ended. And even though a lot of other incomplete Shonen series kind of go the same route. But I think more than anything, I am more mad the fact that Funimation, or that it sold so poorly, that Funimation wasn't able to dub the rest of the series, or even um, license the rest <laughs> over here. So, yeah. I mean, I was kind of hoping at least get the movie. Like, what was that? It kind of like stops. Yeah, that's the thing. It just didn't, it just didn't sell. And it, it's kind of weird, because I remember um, watching this one, well, not watching, listening to this one podcast on... Um, uh, I forgot what what they call themselves, but the whole their main gimmick is actually uh, manly stuff. Oh. Yeah, I have to look what they okay. what they you know what they call them. But they were talking about different series from here and there, and then at one point they brought up Toriko. And basically, they said that Toriko was sort of like, like it it might have popped up either too early or too late, at least in terms of anime. Cause, well, in my opinion, I think it came too early. But mm, I'm going to try to rephrase what they said from what I remember. They were saying that the characters themselves, they look very manly. So um, it, it appeals to the older people, but it would keep away all the more modern fans of, like, you know, modern anime. Also because, you know, JoJo itself, which a lot of people kind of got introduced to masculinity through that format, wasn't around yet. Because <clears throat> that would also help with the fabulous aspect because of Sunny. I mean, no, no one like uh, winks at Sonny anymore. <laughs> no one get, guesses him about the way he dresses or, or his hair or his uh, uh, narcissistic <laughs> attitude. But the part that where I feel that Tortico might have appeared too late is that you remember, like, I remember one of the complaints going around was that people were saying Tortico's about food and it seemed dumb. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember one of the YouTubers mentioning that it was always about food, and that always just irritates me. Because the other thing that I heard that like, that the... Oh, I'll let you go. No, it's just... Like, I mean, that was, like, my first thought as well with Toriko. I always thought, oh, this it's like fighting foodons by more manly or something. Mm -hmm. Fighting foodons. <laughs> I would probably watch that now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Takito. You're but, so you offensive. But, you know, when I got to, like, read more and more into the series, I got, like, intrigued. I got interested in it. You know, it just felt like a... You know, genuine shonen for mm. me. I always felt like that there was actually more to it than just food. I mean, yes, there is food, but there's like other aspects into it as well. You know. Mm. Because I remember um, when Walking Double O Dead was starting to get into Toriko, he, he was really liking it because of mostly because of the fact that the characters were adults, and that's something you don't really see anymore. Yeah, especially in the shonen. Yeah, especially now. Like they're definitely Gintoki's the only adult right now yeah and his series I, yeah. is almost coming to a close too yeah the only exception would be uh one piece and some of the characters are adults like uh frankie he's almost, yeah, technically they're... yeah frankie's almost 40 well that's something well, i mean luffy's in his 20s right now i believe yeah he, but you wouldn't think honest, he was really <laughs> he's yeah. mentally he's not <laughs> mentally 20. <laughs> he's not mentally, exactly. no yeah but like almost like uh, i think all the straw hats there or at least over 20. I think, like, maybe exception with Chopper. Yeah. Um, the youngest. Unless they have, but like... No, he's a rain. Yeah, unless they have some sort of reindeer year type of thing going. Well, mentally, he's a child. That's, that's for sure. It's, for Chopper. It's mentally, it won't be. No one's really at where they should be. Yeah, no one's a full adult, really. <laughs> that, yeah. Yeah, but anyways... The, the, the complaint I was hearing for Toriko was also that, you know, the whole food thing. That it seemed like it was about cooking... Which, in actuality, it was more about the hunting than the cooking, even though cooking would play later, you know, a bigger roles in later parts of the uh, other arcs of the manga. 
But but then like two or three years later, after the Toriko manga and anime were like getting you know on the air, there was a show called uh, Shogoki Shogeki no Soma or Food Wars, and then everyone was liking that. And you know you, why? Yeah, I know why. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know why? Yeah, yeah, I know why. <laughs> yeah, because a lot of people. Foodgasms. Yeah, foodgasms, yeah. and then. A lot of people weren't actually familiar with the fact that there actually is a gourmet genre. At least that's what I think it's called. And in terms yeah, of no, they anime definitely manga. don't mean just simply cooking, but there definitely are uh, plenty of cooking shows. Yeah, and usually, and usually, usually, most of those cooking shows they're not like realistic cooking at all. It's usually, it's like outrageous, hot blooded, or comedic. I mean, um, yakitake. Yak- oh, I forgot the actual title, but. Yeah, Japan. Yeah, Japan, like the bread one. Yeah, the bread yeah. one. That one's more like slice of lifeish comedy, like some yeah. outrageous comedy, but it's about bread. So, <laughs> and then you get stuff like yeah, I mean, uh, there's plenty of cooking shows out there. The only uh, one I can remember, Jigger, I think, is the only one that actually blends cooking with the hunting because you know yeah. most of the time it's just like going out buying the thing. Yeah, yeah, like Mr. Yeah. Achiko is like more on the uh, battle tournament style where you know you gotta put in your energy when you're stirring the damn pot. <laughs> But yeah. what makes Story Go different in that aspect of the gourmet thing is that there's actual battles. And the rest, it's more yeah. like about competitions. This, like, even uh, My Love Story, there's a moment, there's like um, um, pieces of gourmet genre in there because of Takeo's reactions of whenever uh, Yamato would bake all these different pastries. And then at the very end, the final episodes end with a fucking <laughs> food competition. So. Yeah, so then again, I just feel Toriko like really popped out too late because Jojo wasn't around. That way, people would have adjusted a little bit easier to the whole like fighting gimmick and the outrageousness of of it. The same thing goes for like uh, Food Wars, and then I get yeah, Food Wars because once again, the whole food cooking gimmick. Not many people were like, yeah. No, I could to that. pretty much imagine Shima Bukuro yeah. being pissed off when Food Wars became popular. It's like everyone was making fun of me for cooking. And then this motherfucker comes along, and everyone loves him. Yeah. But uh, at the same time, where you're saying about it coming too late, too early, it was pretty interesting. Because the way I always looked at Tariko was that it was kind of like the best of both worlds for both old and new school mm. uh, shonen fans. Because uh-huh. they had everything, you know, older fans wanted. You know, like, older main characters, the more manly uh, style and everything. But everything a newer fan is probably more adjusted to, with they kind of like, Kind of like big open world, uh, kind of colorful and everything, kind of goofy, all that kind of stuff. Because you know Shima yeah. Bukuro really, he likes his shit. Yeah. In the series. <laughs> he, oh, if, uh, oh, he has oh. another series called Takeshi, and like that series has not gone a chapter without referring to shit. So. Yeah, Takeshi. <laughs> <laughs> he really likes shit. There's three chapters as a recording of this video. It's hilarious, but. It's also surprisingly manly. The thing is, it's pretty honorable and respectful, the Keshi character. And even though he's in first grade, it's... <laughs> wow. He looks like he's 40. Yeah, he, I am a boy. <laughs> yeah, oof, yeah, he takes that to the extreme. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's pretty strange, but it's a good type of strange. Because, I mean, he yeah, does... I, it's a, much I nice wouldn't thing. mind it getting an anime adaptation, but I, I don't know. Yeah, he, been too late for he's a time, good maybe. boy. Like, that's the best way to put it. He's a really good boy. It's just the See, same. I, I, it's weird calling him a boy, though, because when you look at his face, it's like... <laughs> yeah. He has a very manly face. I don't know what he's supposed to sound like, either. That's the big question. Well, see, there was an OVA, and the OVA, he was voiced by, uh, I think his name's Cho, who's the guy who does Brooke in uh, One Piece. Yeah, because he oh, sounds... So, he sounds really? Just imagine yeah. a voice like that on a little boy. Yeah, it sounds like an old dude, but I, I was yeah, trying to think whether, you, whether you're supposed to sound like kind of childish, like a kid trying to sound like a man, or straight up man. Because if you... Because like, Hello, I'm Takeshi! I'll be your friend oh, today! Oh, God! <laughs> that's... No! That's weird. Uh, see, yeah, that's the whole thing. It, it is weird. <laughs> <laughs> Because, like, it's, you know, this little boy who, like, his father used to be a leader, and he himself wants to be the best leader in the whole world. Oh, you by know? the, by the way, like, by the way, it's very emotional, but it's right off the bat with chapter one. It's like, oh, damn, I didn't expect this. I just wanted to see some shits and giggles. <laughs> Literally 
shit's so good. Yeah. <laughs> but no, it was like right off the bat, like my father used to be a leader, then oh. Oh, yeah. Then it's just like, then you see his father now, and he's just like, oh. Yeah. The kiss you. Like. But anyways, it was boring. I think we should go back to Toriko before we go straight to Well, far. Takeshi does make, um, Takeshi does make cameos in Toriko manga panels. You just gotta look for him. So. Oh, that's true. Uh, and he's got hey, yeah. them cameos. Yeah, so Toriko, the, again, I feel like the problem is that I still don't know whether it came too early to, I think in terms of like current anime fans, it came too or too early, but, mm, I feel like Toriko has become a bit of a niche type of thing. It's not exactly like, um, I mean, we, it was popular for a while, like two years yeah. ago, and then it just dropped off by its last year. Really yeah, dropped off. Toriko was like taking the world by storm, you know, for a while. Well, okay, not the world by storm, but like, you know, the YouTube anime community at least. You know, you got people that like, you know, Toriko is the greatest. You got like little YouTube channels <laughs> called like the Toriko Dick Writing Association and shit like that. You know, a lot of popular manga reviewers were starting to talk about it, or like ones that weren't giving it a chance were giving it a chance at that time. Uh, it yeah, was all I even good. remember like I remember seeing like um, the uh, the Shonen Jump covers, like whenever it shows like the big three. You know, like back when Naruto was still around and Bleach oh, was still go. around, mm-hmm. when like Bleach, you know, like it barely gets like a cover itself, and Toriko gets covers itself more than Bleach does, and it had like the potential to be like one of the next contenders of the big three, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, for a while, I, I mean, guess it kind of was once Bleach kind of fell off the wagon. Yeah. Because um, mm-hmm. yeah, like Bleach wasn't doing so well. I mean, I, I haven't really gone back to check out the series, so I like I want to know, but like that ended last year as well. Um, but yeah, see, like Chirico was doing really well for itself, and then like the last arc was just kind of weird. Like it felt like it was rushing. The final final arc, or the, yeah, the final, final the, the yeah. final final arc, because like everything leading up to that was fine. Like it was like Chirico looked like it was heading in a really awesome direction, but then Chirico kind of came down with this disease I've told Hero about plenty of times, called like Part Two disease. And it happens to almost every single shonen manga. It's like whenever a series has like a part two and they go to like a brand new part of the world or whatever, or there's a huge time skip, it almost always seems like there's a big decline in quality. Now, some series manage to make it out of it. Others don't. And I'm pretty sure anyone who's read a lot of shonen manga probably knows what I'm talking about. Because it happens to a yeah. good majority of them. And Toriko was kind of like heading down that path. Because like, beginning of Gourmet World, it was all hype. It was a lot of hype. Yes. And then there was like no payoff of it. Because it was hype, and then there was monkey balls, and dancing, and hype, and then it just like, <laughs> don't know what happened Yeah, to I mean it. like, beginning, the beginning of Gourmet World, when they got to like Area 8, it was great. It was good. And then you got to Area 7 with the well, Monkey King and Bambina, and, and hair being balls. It just... I mean, it wasn't bad. It was just really, really strange. And then somewhere when they got to Area 6, when they got to another, it just... It just... It was like... Once we went to the oyster blue clam shell thing, that's when it fell for me. <laughs> yeah, that's where it really... And then uh, we start focusing on Komatsu. And to be honest, Komatsu's not the most interesting. And the whole... I mean, I... I'm pretty sure none of us here really like Komatsu. I it's make it a... Um, I don't hate him. I make it a running gag to say that I hate him. <laughs> I mean, I don't hate him either, but he's not really a character like I want to focus on. And for yeah. a while, there was a couple chapters that were mainly focusing on him. And it's just like, I thought I was reading Toriko, not Komatsu. Yeah. Um, because, well, you gotta be on... Well, to be fair, Komatsu is actually one of the main characters. He is part of Toriko's combo, so I... Was expecting Kamasa to get some, you know, development, you know, and some main focus. But my, my issue was it with this time skip is that we had like what three, four more areas to explore, and it was all skips. Right. Yeah, that too. See, like, and I don't, I don't know what's going on in like offices of Shonen Jump, no one really does. So, like, I'm not sure if it was just uh, Shima Bukuro, he was being rushed. 
because there were some parts that felt rushed, and then there was other parts that felt like it was slowing down, and then like it rushed back up again in the, the final yeah. couple arcs. So like I'm not sure if he was rushing to finish because they're going to just axe the series anyways, or if he just had no more interest in the series, or if that's just maybe how naturally he wanted to do it. I'm not sure, but I... like. Honestly, I felt like that there were signs of it rushing right when Kamatsu and the others came back and they already gotten another and they looked older for some reason. And they had to oh, retell that arc in a flashback. I feel like it would have been better if we just didn't bother with the flashback. I mean, you got us there by surprise already, so just continue from there. Rather than taking a few steps back, so why make, you know, the sudden surprise a surprise to begin with? You know? <sighs> And then there was, like, the whole big final battle, which, um, you know, all things considering, like, scale-wise, was pretty impressive. That's the yeah, that, that's, yeah. that's the biggest. The, yeah, it was the most insane out of anything Shonen Jump, actually, I, I want to say. Yeah, yeah. Like, for, like, for the longest time, I think since Dragon Ball, the Shonen <laughs> manga hasn't gone, like, that extreme yet. Yeah. As the it was did. very extreme. I mean, like, the Earth almost got decimated. Well, also not to mention the Earth itself is, like, bigger than a regular Earth, so if it was, yeah. like, a normal-sized Earth, then it, they would have exploded a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. But I don't know, like, when I was reading the final battle, like, I I felt like that there was all this hype, but it just lacked something to me. Part yeah, exactly. Of, I don't know if I was the only one that felt yeah. that. I was no, actually I, I was actually telling this to Falcon when I was reading the Epo manga that when when you're into like long running fights in a manga, especially when you don't know how long it's gonna be, like it's kind of hard to get into the flow of it, like to know, especially more so on something you gotta weed on a weekly basis, like just to insert yourself into that mood and then continue keep that mood um, blazing for week after week. And it's very difficult. And the other reason why is that, uh, which made me feel kind of uncomfortable with what was going on, was uh, obviously the jumping back and forth between multiple characters, multiple fights. And and then I was still confused what was going on with Acacia. <laughs> I had no idea. Like, bad guy? Oh my God, Good Acacia. guy? <laughs> mm. oh. What are the yeah, Nitros doing? Was, was <laughs> I don't know. I mean, like, at first it seemed like... It just, it seemed like at first, like, Acacia might have been, like, a good guy working with Blue Nitros to get Neo out so that they could seal him for good, turns out. But then there's a time where he's like, oh, he's corrupted by Neo. Oh, no, he's actually a bad guy this whole time. Oh, no, he's actually good. He was just acting like that so that they could try to kill him and get rid of Neo. And Neo's good now! Yeah. Like, I feel like, I don't know, I probably need to reread that final arc. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna have to wait till... Like, again, like Hiro was saying, we're reading it on a week-to-week -week, week -week basis, maybe, like, marathoning it, it might just flow a bit better. It would probably flow um, better, but it would still still be rough. Yeah, I mean, it still has, like, pretty jarring moments, which, like, just... Because there's certain parts where I just kind of wasn't clear on what's going on, I'm like, oh, okay, this... This happened. Yeah, because now with the second time around, you now you have an idea like what the big picture was supposed to be. So now you go in with a certain goal in mind. Yeah, because uh, like at least the way the series like wrapped up is probably like the final couple of chapters. Uh, <laughs> felt like they wrapped up somewhat nicely. Well, then again, even when New World started, it just felt like an awkward start because it looked like, oh, we're gonna save Komatsu. Then, oh no, he's already saved. Huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. What? That was so weird. It was and like then, like, they had the different character designs, too. And then they just, like, like oh, no, you know what? I have a beard off. Oh, yeah, let's go back to what we look like, so... It's like, well, what was the time skip, then? You're not changing your character design? You skipped the, 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 the plot line you were having before the time skip. Yeah, then they <laughs> rushed the, their new plot, like, very... They resolved it very quickly, which was, you know, there's no food. Then Toriko comes in with a bunch of food, and then, the, well, the problem solved. <laughs> and then, hey, look, this is Millie and Edbird. Just, just look at it. <laughs> Popping out eggs left and right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah I don't know. actually, like, my issue with this part, of, well, with Toriko, I guess during the, after the time skip was like, 
there was a lack of focus on certain characters that I wanted them to get focus on. Like, the Four Heavenly Kings, for example. I mean, Coco, Sunny, and Zebra. Yeah. Zebra they really didn't get to do anything. I'm, 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 like, I'm trying to think. I'm like, man, my boy Zebra didn't do shit. No. No. It's, they didn't even get involved. They got involved in the final battle, but they didn't do anything cool or noteworthy. Yeah, they were, were kind of... You know, he's finally with, like, Branchy, and I'm like, oh, yeah, these two, they're going to go in. And then yeah. they didn't do anything. He's like, going to be oh. with... Yeah, his name is Brunch in English. <laughs> oh. Oh, hey, okay, I don't so care. I call him Branchy. I was always confused because I've heard some people say brunch and then branchy, so I'm like, I don't know. Oh, yeah, because I know... Well, originally yeah. it was branchy in the, I guess, in the scanlation, but they changed it to brunch. Yeah. I guess with Tariko would be... Actually, no, because in Tariko, I don't think there's that many food pun names. Not really. And actually, the, like the, the, the Yeah, the Funimation dub actually is the one that... I like what's Dragon Ball. Yeah, the Funimation dub is what threw in a lot more food puns and its lines... Like, totally go over now. Yeah, and then. really, though, I think it's how Toriko could have benefited itself. Because I still remember that one line in the manga where uh, Midora is just like, you know, eat my fist. I'm like, yes, finally someone said that in this manga. Eat my knuckle sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have my knuckles. I'm like, I, you don't know how long I was waiting for that. Like, I actually got out of my chair. I'm like, yes, someone said it. Actually, Midora was pretty boss, like, towards the end of the series. <laughs> the one line that got me, like, very impressed is when he's finding Acacia and Acacia was telling him like like then she would come even when uh, she would still cook for me even when I come home even covered in hickeys and then Midora just got so mad he just punched the shit out of him. <laughs> yeah yeah that's what he said like eat my fist and I'm like oh shit yeah you don't talk shit about <laughs> Froze in front of Midora don't talk about my mom <laughs> what'd you say about my mom you should talk like that about anyone's mom unless you're expecting an ass with <laughs> say though Midora I felt like he was the best character in Toriko at least development wise because he had his own flashback we got to understand where he came from what he'd been through and honestly he had the best development yeah his character. yeah his story went full circle I mean we find out what he was evil and then had a change of heart towards the end and, you know, try to atone himself, and then he finally got what he wanted to yeah. have a meal with his family. Yeah, and then their souls rest in peace. Yeah. Yes. <sighs> and also there was a whole Rao Toki fight from, like, way back. <laughs> oh, yeah, that one. Oh, yeah, yeah. that was awesome. Yeah. It, was, it shocked me how it was, like, almost the exact same thing <laughs> towards the end of the yeah. way. The way that fight ended, it was like, well, that's familiar. <laughs> like... Well, actually, um, yeah, kind of. Yeah. It was doing good for itself. It was just kind of. To, to, just, I mean, it's still an overall good series. Yeah, like, yeah, it, yeah, it is. Almost everyone really tried to sell the show. They really tried. Toei tried. Funimation tried. Especially Toei, because look how many oh, crossovers. Yeah, I think that was a mistake because I think after Toriko, that's where a lot of the Toei hate started coming in. I feel. Yeah. I mean, they were really trying to like, sell after it. After that, that's when everyone was like, Toei is shit, this is that, and just nitpicking everything Toei does. Yeah. I mean, like, One Piece started though, going like... down the same route, too, but not to the yeah. extreme. But here's the thing, though. I mean, there was the, the OVA when they, like, adapted the Gal the Galala Gator. Uh-huh. Right. And everybody loved that. Yeah. Because it just, it was adapted very nicely. It didn't do any censorship. It was exactly... How it was in the manga. I also think it was the colors, because I think the anime at times is just a bit too bright. Like, I understand, like, Toriko, yeah. like, the world's colorful. But, like, in the anime, it's, like, almost, like, too colorful for a series that could get, Yeah, like, it's pretty... always bright. It's like, am I watching a show in Battle Adventure, or are we walking down the lovely lane to see the Wizard of Oz? Just, like, make up your mind. We're in Candy oh. <laughs> Falcon, we're obviously in Candyland. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, actually, yeah. well, actually, flapjack. Yeah, actually, a missed opportunity was a uh, chocolate factory. They never did that. Never oh, did yeah. it. Oh, boo. Never did. To- Torigo never went there. I know it's just, it's such a shame that the Torigo to anime started going downhill. I mean, like, unlike other animes, have fillers, and if it did have fillers, it's always short. Yeah. Um, that was the, the shame with uh, Torigo, because like. A better studio probably will help 
but also it also I believe it also re- relied on other series like Dragon Ball Z and One Piece with the crossover episodes. Yeah. Oh yeah, the, uh, that's the what I mean, right? Yeah, that's what I meant with uh, they were really trying to sell the show, and then it yeah. just never caught that's people's how, interest. That's how I got into Toriko because well, I don't want really to get into because that like, crossover with One Piece didn't really sell me on it, but that's how I found out about Toriko. I remember there's quite a few people that I've heard of that like they normally got kind of like introduced. From it, like, yeah, crossover. yeah. Basically, they were trying to promote it as much as they could because even when Gintama, they cameoed. Like in the second Gintama movie. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, right off the bat, yeah, you but... see them there, and then. Yeah, and then like, uh, and then Gin, and then then Gintoki Shinpachi Kagura, they also cameoed too. Yeah, they cameoed in the Tori, the second Toriko movie, it's like in the background. So yeah, and then obviously the the Dream Nine, the the Dream Nine crossover with uh, One Piece and Dragon Ball, like that was the biggest one they had, and then those two other times where they cross over with One Piece. Right. right. So yeah, it definitely had exposure. I think that... totally, like predict like we're trying to make it like because they knew it was like a big series on Shonen Jump, so they're trying to think like okay, this could be our next big thing, and it wasn't doing that well, so they're yeah. just like oh crap, we have to do something. Like we put a lot of like effort into this one. Yeah. And then I remember kinda... like in in the in the time block, I remember that they aired it on like Sunday mornings or something in Japan, which not really would have been a good place to air toward. Tori- Go yeah, because I know like that it got a uh, more kid friendly with things, but I like the adaptation. But also, there's stuff that I, that I question about because okay, if your goal is to try to sell it for like you know more younger audience. Uh, obviously, I get the whole censorship deal. But then what I don't understand is that a lot of the comedy that was in the manga wasn't in the anime either, which I find pretty odd. Like a lot of the uh, goofy looking panels, they weren't there. So I thought, you know, you should have capitalized yeah. on that. So, mm, no idea. Well, that's the thing, like, you can, like, get past the censorship in the earlier arcs. But then, when they eventually got to, like, um, shoot, uh... Four Beasts. What's that arc? Well, uh, when they learn, um... No, 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 when they learn, um, gour- gourmet luck? Good luck? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Temple, that one. Yeah. That's when they started, like, showing some things that you weren't expecting. Like, for example, like, Toriko's bones. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's Chio. Like, you remember that? Yeah, yeah, that's when the censorship was starting to go away. Like, in the Four Beasts arc, I remember that's when they started showing a lot of blood when um, they were fighting. And then, like, the bloodiest fight by far without censorship was Sun- Tor- was Sunny versus Tommy Rod, which probably is the best animated fight of the whole series, actually. Yeah, even though it was censored, it was still really cool to watch. I'll admit. Yeah, maybe that was around the times, and those were like kind of like a little before the anime started to end. Yeah, that, like, oh, that was more like a. I guess that was like a little last hurrah, you know? Like we might as well just go out with this, and then the budget was dropping, like every episode. <laughs> The, like it, especially it was after that, that like one Dragon Ball Super interview. I'm not sure if it's a uh, if it's budget or new animators. Whatever, whatever excuse they, whatever excuse they want to, whatever excuse they want to say, like nobody knows. They're gonna keep it a secret. What, what really happened? <laughs> I always feel so bad. It's kind of like throwing the new animator, animators under a bus. Um, yeah, it's the new animators. They suck. It's not my problem though. So yeah, what assholes? That's not true. Like, jeez, man. Like, what but, but, so mean to these guys? I think at the end of the day, though, what really killed Toriko was just not enough support for it. For like anybody, because you got like the manga fans who they weren't interested in the product, and you got um, anime fans who weren't interested in the product because they thought it was dumb, and then you got um, the older fans which probably give it a chance. But oh, actually, this goes back to what I was gonna say. Uh, I forgot to mention this. Like they were saying that you know the character designs of Toriko were like keeping people away, but to those who were interested, it wasn't like completely manly per se because what they were um I, I don't remember the exact wording but they said that he got the look of the show but it doesn't feel exactly like a like a manly series from the 80s like it's still missing a little something and that's kind of also the problem that i noticed it, I, it's like you no know, kind of what i was saying it was like i guess maybe that's probably what went wrong it tried getting the best of both worlds but it didn't so it's like toriko is basically if you just mix match an 80s shonen with a current shonen 
and, and uh, I guess I get really too extreme. Like, for example, like another series that kind of did the same thing, but I mean, probably wasn't as critically successful, but just ended up doing a better job at it. It was like, it probably be like Congo Bancho, uh. where it managed to still, you know, be like an A.A. Shonen, but at the same time, just enough to be like a modern well, kind of story. Well, one of the difference with Congo Bancho is that it was... um acknowledging it's a realist it was in a realistic setting acknowledging the current times yeah, exactly. and yeah. you know the fact that like this 80s character shouldn't be in this time period <laughs> so yeah no that was like the first chapter it's like they don't make people like you anymore boy yeah <laughs> yeah then obviously the the, um, <clears throat> the yeah then the social commentary of pretty much like the problem was Japan, like with the otakus, the Komoris, and then the Akihabara, the maid cafes. Pretty much everything. Yeah. The thing is, even the villains had that same mindset. They didn't like what was going on either. So that's what kind of makes it work. Totally uh, did... side note, for anyone, like, I think it was like chapter 9. I forgot what chapter it was, but like when Kongo goes to like a maid cafe, the chapter is like hilarious as fuck. Yeah. Like, just find that, find that chapter and read it. It's like fucking amazing. Yeah, I'll link it. Because he just goes in... Yeah, he just goes in, just like on this maid cafe, and then it was like even like uh, one of those like live action Sentai shows. Yeah. That they like have in public. <laughs> he was just tearing everything to shreds. It's like, why the fuck are you guys doing this? Like, you won't punch someone, punch him for real. But then again, I think the other problem is just support, because the one for sure that's clearly obvious is that anime support was like almost non existent over here. I mean, I bought the DVDs, yeah. but <laughs> my efforts weren't enough. <laughs> Did uh, Toriko go on Tsunami? Or... Nope. Oh, wait, no. no. I, don't, yeah, I, don't, I don't think it ever... It never on TV. I'm not even yeah. sure if it aired on, like... I'm not sure if it's even streamed. I know Crunchyroll has the uh, the subbed episodes, all of them, because that's the only place where you can watch, um, you know, all the episodes in good quality without having, you know, the clock in the corner or the channel logo on the side. So, yeah, that's one benefit of the Crunchyroll version. Yeah, I'm actually not sure if it's if the dubs even streamed either, because currently, um, originally Toriko's uh, DVDs were released like 13 episodes on four discs, four sets. I already have those four sets, and currently those four sets have been combined into two sets, and they're still not really selling. So, okay, I mean, well, yeah. here's what I found out. Okay, so Funimation licensed Toriko in 2011, mm-hmm. and it was for streaming in North America. Four days after the Japanese broadcast. It even premiered on Hulu and on Funimation's official website on April. Yeah, but not on the actual Funimation channel then, or any channel, per se. Because, uh, the lack of support probably hurt the series as well. Yeah, more than anything. Because, if anything, I want to say the manga is the only thing that's being supported. But even then, I feel like Toriko is probably a bit more on the niche side of things. Which is kind of weird like, to say. It was breaking out popularity like where, where did it really it started it was it was during the whole f- um, food i was gonna say food wars but uh the gourmet fest that's when everything okay. went like I mean, um, there's right. a little before it like i want to say maybe gourmet temple um that's when I, like, personally, all the, that's when I started, you know, a lot of people say that when it got good is during the ice hell yeah i felt yeah, that's awesome. true yeah because i remember a lot of people when i was getting into it people were like hyping up the, the okay. ice hell and i'm like oh i guess because I was already kind of into it, because, um, you know, once I started, because at first, like, I didn't like the food concept, but, you know, as of now, I'm way more open, open-minded about the kind of series I watch, so, like, I'd probably watch yeah. any series about food now, but, uh, once I actually got used to the concept and everything, I started enjoying it a lot more, so, like, I was really into it after, like, the first couple chapters, but I think that was the problem when most people were describing it, they are like, oh, it's about cooking, but it's... You know, like we were saying, it's more about the hunt. And I think if you were mentioning hunting giant monsters and shit like that, it probably would have got more people in, rather than just saying it's all about food. You know? Yeah. Mm, I think you got because a point there. Because hunting sounds way more cooler than just, like... I, th- I think you got a point there. Like, there, a lot of the reception of Toriko was mostly negative, and a lot of the people that were that were talking about it didn't even go that far into it. So. Like, if you just told someone Toriko was like manly shonen man versus wild like I guarantee people probably like there won't be more people it's a man that hunts his own food he goes out in the wilderness and eats shit 
Killed a tiger. Yeah, fuck Bear Grylls. You have Toriko. <laughs> you got gators, man. He's gonna eat a gator burger straight from the swamp. He lives in a house made of candy. Oh yeah, that's true. Which I'm like, I'm just well, like, what about the bugs, man? That's kind of like. Well, yeah, that and Toriko is well, ridiculously so made for rich. Toriko. Yeah, Toriko. Toriko is ridiculously rich. Also, so, like that's not exactly like. It's that's not actually something you would think about, but he's he's very loaded. <laughs> Well, yeah, other Goku. Yeah. <laughs> well, other characters. <laughs> well, obviously, all the rich folks in Toriko like that. That old guy, like he was obviously more loaded than. Yeah, there's like an elite people that are loaded, but you know, for a gourmet hunter like the heavily king Toriko and his bros, they're all pretty like, uh, pretty up there. And and the thing is, I, I feel there is actually there is some depth to it. It just doesn't explore it too much. Like a lot of the concepts are like um, people being superficial. And I thought it could have led to something a bit greater. That and um, I actually um, I have a problem also with Toriko's narrative because uh, well, obviously the whole God thing didn't get introduced until like a little later, like with Grimpatch. But oh, yeah. one of my problems with Toriko is that um, it's kind of the same problems I have with Blue Exorcist in a very simple matter, and it's noticeable by watching the anime openings of both shows. In Blue Exorcist, the openings that you notice that there's hardly any villain spotlight, because you know that's standard for for a shonen. You know you gotta have a little like ten twenty seconds for, dedicated to the villain in the opening. That way we know what we're going against. And obviously in Toriko, we see them towards the end. And of course yeah. they're focusing on Tommy Rod, Grim Patch, Star June, and Midora, who's in silhouette at the time. But um, the actual show itself. It really takes a while just to see those characters like for the first time, and even then, those villains aren't and aren't exactly recurring either. And I think that's kind of a yeah, problem. Yeah, I mean, like Tommy Rod gets killed, Grim Patch. I don't know what the fuck happened to him. I think he turned into poison or some shit. Mm -hmm. Star June. Um. He stays. <laughs> well. <laughs> Yeah, that and the main villain himself, like, obviously the big baddie, you know, you gotta little, wait a little bit for him, but all the henchmen, though, they came, they rarely came, so, and, you know, I don't know, the villain-wise, villain because, like, some arcs didn't really even have a villain, it was just, uh, whatever they were hunting. It was just going after it, yeah. Yeah. Because those were really set up like a battle show and then... Well, like, the the other the, 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 yeah, the one thing I do find interesting that I don't think I've ever seen a, a battle shown and do this between the heroes and villains that the villains were about the same level as the heroes and both of them were like competing to you know gain the who will gain the power up faster. So I think that's a first really where the villains weren't that much powerful than the heroes and they were like in the same boat of you know they weren't already like at the strongest they were still like. Trying to get uh resources. Yeah, like also at the end of the day, they all had like jobs to do too. Like Trico was like the, I forgot what they called it. It's Shokia. Yeah, the yeah, yeah, the, we have the and king the villains had their own like organization. Yeah, called well, Bishoku so, Kai. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So like they all had like, their jobs to do too. So, like I also found that interesting. So it wasn't like they're just doing all this on their own. It's like they had a job. To do. <laughs> Yeah, so it, yeah. it, it kind of goes a little bit on the a little bit on the slice of life approach in some stories, a little bit. Because really, the whole thing with Rico is kind of just like fighting his uh, full course. Which he did. <laughs> yeah, which he which he did. So I, I, that aspect of the story was fine, and then that that's like the, the yeah. core of Rico was like his his uh, full course, and then uh, everything else was slowly introduced in. Mm. Yeah. Everything was like really slowly introduced because um, Zebra was foreshadowed really early. He didn't come in until like more than almost halfway oh, later. I, I thought the series forgot about him for a while. I'm like, what is this guy? Like, <laughs> the group? like they just forgot him. <laughs> like, oh, oh God, no. That's what I was thinking, but then luckily he had a really awesome introduction. I'm like, oh, he's the row of the group. Yeah, it was fucking badass at the beginning. I Zebra's like, introduction was incredible. Um, but then, like, after his introduction, he just goes away, he comes back, goes away, and then, like, after that, he's, like... Yeah, yeah especially you know, when they're, like, setting up something, like, he has, like, his own goal to, like, get, uh, like, his own full course just so that he can get Komatsu. 
Kamatsu would be I my see, bitch. Kamatsu was like the Yuri of the series. Everyone wanted him. Like, I'm surprised the series didn't continue enough for like them to like start like killing each other and backstabbing each other. <laughs> and like I don't know, maybe someone to poke holes into Toriko's chest and like throw him off a cliff. <laughs> and you're like, Kamatsu! Like, yeah. Toriko! <laughs> it's actually funny considering like Toriko was actually more upset of women seeing Kamatsu than he was about losing a Kasia. Yeah. No, not a Kasia. But, uh, cheer you. Yeah. It's like, I'm depressed. <laughs> Everybody wanted Kamatsu. Too. Yeah, they want the little... It would be shit. Like, I don't know, Sunny just, like, pulls, like, Toriko to the side and it's like, you know what, I'm taking Kamatsu now. <laughs> <laughs> Gives him scars and, like, throws him, like, this is a gourmet star. He actually star. wanted him as his, it was part of his combo. All, all the Heavenly Kings wanted him. Mm. Coco. I'm, not, I'm, I'm oh. not sure if Coco ever, like, Brought it up, but I think he did like his company like, a lot. Chill. Yeah, he knows like, like, like Coco. He, Coco knows I, like you know like <laughs> like there's no room in there for me. <laughs> I see. T- yeah, I see. Coco is like Toki. He's just like mm, no. no, love's not my thing. <laughs> <laughs> love's not my thing. I, I'd rather be like I'd rather be a bro. Poison, poison you know? fortune teller Jesus. Yeah, you know? Coco. You know. <laughs> Coco's mindset is like Toki's bros before hoes, you know. <laughs> uh, to the extreme. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like, out of three out of the four, like, really, very resemble like Fist and North Star characters, except for Sunny, who has more in common with Yuda than with Jaggy. <laughs> oh God, yeah. I always felt like Coco and Sunny should like switch names, cause like Sunny looks more like a Coco. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that hair. Like, I'm Coco for Coco Plus. <laughs> yeah, but, like, yeah. I was about to say Coco, but, like, I meant Sunny. Like, Sunny was uh, actually pretty cool uh, once yeah. he got to, like, see more of him. His Satan hair. And then, uh, yeah, and Satan, I mean, I kind of liked him a bit before that, because, like, the whole hair, like, the whole, like, the feelers and everything, that was pretty mm. cool. But then the Satan hair is, like, yo. Yeah. His hair turned blonde. Yeah. Like yeah. He, it went like he went Super Saiyan three, but more straight. Yeah, more three. <laughs> so see, that's that's the thing with Chirico though that I felt like really did good in was uh like its scale. Cause everything yeah. in Chirico was like you know go big or just get the fuck out. Yeah. Not even go home. Just like get the fuck out. Um, and then like it was pretty creative. Like I know Chirico. Um. Imagination. Have, like, Im- imagination was his strongest suit for sure. Because like Toriko was pretty imaginative with its attacks and monsters and locations and whatnot. It was a very uh, like the world building was pretty cool. Yeah, like I would say it's, yeah. it's one of the good things about Toriko. Yeah, like everything about it's it the... was just was just pretty amazing in scope and scale. It, hell, it's what it's what sold me for Toriko it was the adventure, the hunt, the world building. That's why I was so hyped to when we get to Gourmet World, because, you know, get to explore. Yeah, things are outrageous. I mean, you got horses riding rainbows, a shark train, oh, yeah. fucking <laughs> monkey balls, 69 you know, dancing. You got, like, a horse that could just kill you by, like, breathing on you. Yeah. yeah. Or, like, inhaling. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. And then, and then just, like, the power scale, because, like, see, the thing with Trico. And I'm like joked about it because like Chirico for a while like I mean the characters were strong but it wasn't like super over the top but like in some point in Chirico like I don't know Shima Brukro just one like I felt like he had to prove something and show the jump he's like yeah I could be over the top I'll show you and then all of a sudden he just it's starts like... pulling all the stops you know the the world stopped because the dude punched him <laughs> it was like shit was going there, insane there was a it's like dude, oh, there stop. was a dude. That can control time. Yeah, it, it was a like fucking like, like, like if he had all the powers of like of like the time control stands. Yeah. Wait, who we're talking yeah. about? I'm actually feel lost. <laughs> like who we're talking about? Um. Okay. Um. There was you know that spider Saisea guy that had the ability to like pause, fast forward, and rewind. Mm. Oh, you mean the one with all the other arms? Or that one? The, the spider. I don't remember. I, I forgot his name. It was it was as I say, the spider guy. I like he can pause. Like he has the world. He can. Oh wait 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 yeah, and... yeah yeah yeah. Midora's the one that fought him right. 
I think. <laughs> no, I think that was Pepe. I don't, know. I don't remember Pepe. anymore. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I remember that because there's a spider that can like stop time and actually has the powers of a remote control. It was weird. Yeah. He was a it's children. like Shimabuka was trying to like surpass the ridiculousness over the top hype and power of Dragon Ball. Yeah, like I, I felt like I don't know, someone in Shonen Jump was just like telling like, hey Shimabuka, my characters could be your characters. Shimabuka goes, you know what? I've had it with your shit, Kishimoto. Let's go. <laughs> Oda's next. <laughs> yeah, Oda's next, you bitch, and then we'll go after you, Toriyama. I was like, what did I do? I'm not even in the office at fuck you, Tor. Oh. And then before he leaves, he'd be like, and Togashi. <sighs> Togashi. <laughs> just stay in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> just stay there. Yeah, then Shimabukuro. And then for a while, Shimabukuro was, was proving his point, and then he just stopped. <laughs> Like, I mean, that's why Togashi wasn't working, because, like, Shimabukuro had, like, intimidation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he walked into the office, his gourmet demon would come out. Togashi's like, I'm not working today. Fuck that. I was going to um, come back from my hiatus, but never mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, who knows what goes on in the offices of Weekly Shonen Jump. But, um, yeah, yeah Shimabukuro, just, like, he, he went through. Because, like... Chiriko was pretty over the top, but like it almost seemed like out of nowhere, shit was just like blowing up. The the moons, this that, the other were just getting sliced apart. The strangest of Honestly, them animals. You got like giraffes. Yeah, and, the animals. You got like, these giraffes. Like, you you like, got these giraffes that got their heads like, blown remember off. Back in the day, like remember yeah, back in the day, like a capture level five or a capture level ten was like a big deal. <laughs> now we got like <laughs> now we got like capture levels that are over nine thousand. Yeah. I mean, to be honest, with Shonen series, whenever they have power levels, I, like, I don't even bother, like, paying attention to them, because, like, there's rarely a series that bothers with them anymore. It's like, they establish them, and then, like, midway through the series, like, ah, oh, you know what, fuck power levels, fuck that, who needs them? Because then you just get things that break it. Yeah, I totally go one, like, ridiculous. Well, th- well, there's obvious some inconsistencies with early chapters, because, um... <clears throat> If I remember correctly from my Viz translation, I'm pretty sure the official scan say this too, or whatever, is that um, they actually mentioned Toriko was like the only, the only one that could take on a Garavigator. The only person in the fucking world. Oh, <laughs> well, that was wrong. Maybe at that time. <laughs> no, it was a level 7 shit, I don't know, like anyone else could have done it. Anyone else could have done it too. Like, yeah, we could do it Maybe too. Maybe everyone did some training at that point, you know? They went the freezer route. They did like four months of training and they came out golden. Golden. But, um, yeah, golden time. Yeah, too. Trico only got like how many? They only got like two movies, right? Two, two movies. movies. Oh, actually, there's um, there is one lost piece media of Toriko that hasn't seen the light of day. What? Oh. Um, one OVA that never got released. I don't even know if it. No, I don't even know if it actually exists. Yeah, I don't even know if it actually exists because this is the only image, and information of this is scarce. Toriko oh, okay, cats yeah. the barbarian ivy. Yeah, that's um, no, nothing else exists for it because supposedly UFO Table animated that, but the oh, word the word on the street is. is Supposedly, but the image they use right there is straight up Toei. That's definitely Toei's like um, designs there and coloring. So, but eh, no, nobody knows because some people. Supposed to come out. Two thousand ten. Supposedly, the reason why it never came out is because yeah, supposedly it never came out because that's when Toei like got the rights to it. So even though this article says UFO table, the picture is clearly Toei. So no idea whether. If they if UFO Table made one, only they never got to release it because of Toei, you know, popping it out. Because um, if you look at the uh, ending of the first Toriko uh, pilot with the you know the UFO Table one in the credits, you see them just showing a lot of different scenes of the uh, mammoth, the regal mammoth. So I don't know if this one was supposed oh, yeah. to. Yeah, so, I remember that. <clears throat> so I don't know if this was supposed to be like. Um, and in the, oh wait, was it that one or the Toriko movie? Ah, fuck, I don't remember. But the point is, yeah, yeah, it, it looked like it might have been something to do with the Regal Mammoth art because that had that's the introduction of Sunny uh, in the manga in the series, and Coco was there too. So I always assumed that it would, it would be about that, but 
I looked around for this. No one has it. Nobody. So it is technically um a lost. It's a lost anime. Ah. Uh, yeah, I'm actually making really? a list. I'm actually making a list of lost anime and. Uh, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, because I found stuff that that people can't find. <laughs> this. Top five lost anime. Actually, it's ten. <laughs> Oh, top ten. Yeah, one of them is Satanica. <laughs> like that didn't happen. <laughs> that was a canceled anime, but whatever. And you know, Gungrave Overdose Two never happened either. <laughs> oh, really? That was supposed to be a thing? I'm not sure, but um, in the booklet that I have, there's images of um, of um, Madhouse animating some pictures, like some illustrations of Gungrave Two. So yeah, there's that's like the only thing that exists. <laughs> I mean, it could have been just like scenes yeah. from the game. So. I mean, at least with the Phantom Blood movie, we've gotten at least like some scenes. Yeah, there's proof that it exists. <laughs> there's that, <laughs> but it's yeah, yeah, but no one can see it. Like Araki's like, no, no one gets to see this movie but me. <laughs> Or, I don't know, it's, it makes me wonder how bad it is, because, you know, some series get bad adaptations, and, like, you don't really see the author say anything about it. Yeah, like... But Rocky was just like, no, no one will see this. Fuck this movie. Burn it. Well, I hope he hasn't burned it. <laughs> I hope not. He just keeps it in the back. Maybe it was so good, he didn't want anyone to see it. So it's just mine, oh. mine alone. <laughs> like, only I can watch it. This is mine. He secretly loves oh, it. Oh, my... <laughs> Yeah, who knows, because I actually do have a couple of uh, lost anime stuff. Actually, I was so mad because I, I thought I found something that was lost, but it turns out they're all just illustrations for um, an art book done by just one illustrator. Because it, it looked like there was supposed to be a, dir a dirty pair of 90s anime and a cyborg 90s anime and a Tekaman 90s. Because they're all completely wow. drawn in a different art style, and I'm wondering, oh, is this lost anime that never came out? Nope, it's just uh, illustrations that this one guy made. I know there was a lost... Mazinger anime that came out in the 80s. Yeah, I heard. I forgot what it was called, but anyway, enough on lost subjects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, uh, well, what else is there to say about Toriko? Uh, um, what were you like? What were your thoughts on like some of the certain like plot twists, like Star Jun Toriko being twin brothers, or uh, Toriko having a third gourmet Salimin, uh, or the revelation that. Toriko and Sarjun's parents or Kasi and Froze. Like, well, I don't know. What do you guys think about those? I feel like the ogre stuff didn't have to go beyond two. Well, because the two thing I get, because, you know, that's like part of the folklore, but I don't know why they needed to go like a step further with three and or more. I, yeah, I feel like... Especially when they said... The one, yeah, two. especially when they said the third one was his original. But it was just sleeping the entire... And the, the worst thing is, is just it shows him to do one thing and that that's it. It was actually, he just comes and just freaking one-shots Neo with a finger poke, or flick of the finger or some shit. Shining finger. Yeah. I, I honestly, I felt like I'm probably one of the few people that didn't like the fact that Toriko had a third gourmet sold in it. Mm. I mean, mm. I was satisfied with Red and Blue, and Blue, we didn't even know much about him. Yeah, it just came out of nowhere, too. It literally came yeah. out of nowhere. <laughs> See, my, my problem with all these revelations is just, like, I don't feel they're, like, executed properly, because, like, when they're revealed, I'm like, oh, okay, then. It's like, kind of weird. <laughs> it's kind of weird because, they lack, um... like, an impact, and they just, yeah. like, they really did, like, okay, it's, it could kind of come out of nowhere, but then, like, at least do something to kind of, like, more, like, bring it to the point, but it's just like, hey, this, later... Yeah. yeah. Especially with like Toriko and Starjun being brothers, I'm like, what? What? Why? So much done with that. So much, and it was just like, oh, that looks Starjun. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah, like they have. He has like a hard heart with Toriko just one time, and then, uh, gourmet luck. Yeah. It's like, whoa, you're my bro. <laughs> there. You know else. Actually, what actually pissed me off is that like we get to learn like what happened, like, why like, they were separated from Froze, and it was never explained like, how some of this stuff actually happened, or what happened, like, okay, cause like, you guys know that like, apparently they were moved from the womb, 
actually removed from Froze, kept in the womb, and then drifted off on a boat for God knows how long. And then they eventually got separated. You know what this reminded me of? This and North Star 2. What? <laughs> Yeah, so back to the subject of brothers, and to probably wrap up the Toriko subject, is that in the Toriko brother thing, I, I, I'm okay with it, but what I'm not okay with is that they don't really do anything with it towards the end. They don't. Yeah, it doesn't, like, there wasn't really that much bonding, it didn't make that much impact, it didn't really provide anything for the characters as a whole. It was just kind of like, almost. it almost felt like a pointless reveal, at least to me. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's what most of the reviews felt like. It's like, oh, look at this, but, like, there was no impact to it. <laughs> that is, uh, that is Toriko. It was a manga. And it ended. I will say this, though. I mean, the wedding chapter, even though I'm not a huge fan of Toriko and Rin together, I'm not even a huge fan of Rin in general, for that matter, the ending, the reception, it was very nice. <laughs> Yeah, see, like, that, like, the, the last chapter, was like, it felt like the proper send-off. Yeah. Like, that, that was a nice chapter. And then they go to space. And now we're involved by herself again. Oh, Just you know... Toriko would rather be in Komatsu. We all know that. <laughs> actually, <laughs> you know, Toriko GT is actually legit. Gourmet. Oh my god. Gourmet. It, it, it starts with the G out, and Toriko the T. Toriko cheated on Ren with Komatsu. Oh. And, yeah, it was very tragic. Red got over it. <laughs> she went with Sunny. Yeah, but like it's. <laughs> oh it's no, crazy. that's wrong. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Red went with Sunny. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, with Coco or Zebra, I don't know. <laughs> um, no, the thing is, okay, like get back on track here. Um, the thing is, like, if the manga ended at that wedding reception, where he just like. You know, just recaps all the ingredients that we've gone through from the beginning to the end, I would have been okay with. But then they had this chapter where they gave us some info about gourmet gods and gourmet god energy and where the gourmet cells originated from, different universes. And that just got me thinking, yeah. god fucking damn it. I remember one of the earlier chapters of Trico, like one of the volumes I had, they were saying like gourmet cells came from like this squid or something. Like something yeah, like jellyfish. Well, I guess I don't know, they probably tie it back. It's like, oh, it's a space jellyfish! Oh, from planet Gourmet Land! Giant Gourmet Land confused the hell out of me. When I was like reading it, Gourmet Land always confused the hell out of me because it's like a, a, a magic source, it's like a source of energy. Use fights these days. And, and then when you get to learn what gourmet, energy, gourmet luck really was, it's technically just a bunch of invisible entities that help you out. Yeah. Like when I first learned that, I was like, what the f really? Because we have gourmet cells, gourmet luck, gourmet demons. So, final thoughts on Toriko series as a whole? Need an <laughs> that probably will solve a lot of issues. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but like, it, it was for what it was, it was good. Um, because you know they always say endings can make or break the series, so I don't. Because I don't remember when Trick was going, it was like it was one of my more favorite series. I'm not sure if I was like, supposed to do like my top favorites list and be on there, but for what it was, it was a good time. Um. You know, everything leading up to the ending is uh, pretty good once you open up the concept. And even then, the concept's not that bad. When really, when you look at any Shonen series, the concept kind of sounds stupid. You know? Um, so you just gotta give it a chance. But the ending probably could have been better. I'm not sure if it was rushing what was going on. Some of the reviews could have been executed a lot more uh, uh, better as well. Because like I said, the review was just they lack an impact. And then the final battle, uh, you know, it's the final battle, but like there's a lot of points in it where I kind of lost interest. And that's obviously something you don't want to do. Yeah. I definitely recommend it if someone hasn't read it. 
uh, of their Indian shonen or Indian action. Now that more people are more accustomed to manliness, uh, JoJo and everything, it's probably be another good series. And l like I said, it does mix. The, it has a good balance of what made older shonen series good as well as what makes current shonen series good. And then also the anything for just how creative it could be, as well as like the mind blowing scale. Because I don't think as of yet, like any of the current show series have really ever gone that far. Since like the biggest was Dragon Ball series like that back in the day. Because like I mean, One Piece and Naruto were pretty good at this time. And like One Piece is still ongoing, but like nothing has really happened to the same degree as the stuff that I was going down the street. Sorry, go. Like, I honestly believe that this was one of my favorite series, one of my favorite entertaining series that I've had the pleasure of reading, and how even watching, except up to where the confessor ended, um, it had great potential to be a contender of the big three. It had potential to gain this popularity that I believe that would have gotten if it was handled better from the anime and maybe even in the manga, I'm not sure, but I do recommend this series if you're into like adventure, hunting, over the top battles, world building, and food. If you're into that, um, yeah, I mean, I didn't love it. It does have some issues in later arcs, I will admit, and. There is a lot of hype that goes into this series, and sometimes it does, like, um, it actually, like, builds up to the hype. I mean, it exceeds your expectations, but there are times where it just, it just doesn't, like, work, doesn't flow. Like, the execution is not that great, and I feel like it's because of somewhere around the Gourmet World arc. Like, when they got to Area 6, I felt like that's where it started going downhill in a way. And I don't know, like, why the story was rushed at the end. It could have been because of Shimabukuro, it could have been because of the Shonen Jump, but if it was executed better, this manga series would have been really high. It would have been really high up there, but I really still love Toriko to this day. I am disappointed with how things have gone, but I still enjoy the series. And I feel like that the ending, the chapter before the final chapter, was the perfect ending to Toriko. Yeah, what can I say? I don't know. I still feel like maybe the, people, the world wasn't ready for Toriko. <laughs> it was also the time where... Yeah. I also feel it's a time where... Um, I. It was still around the point anime wasn't exactly like that uh, widespread compared to now. Like, like I guess like the last two, three years. I mean, look at all the streaming sites and licenses that we're getting to this day. Then and I feel well, like yeah. yeah. If the anime or maybe if the series didn't come out in like 2011, 2010, if they came out earlier, maybe. Well, later. It's... Oh, later, later, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Maybe then it would have the chance to gain the popularity it deserves. Yeah, because just about everything gets picked Truly up it's... now. Usually everything gets picked up now and people tend to, like, look at things or, you know, be more open-minded, I think, now than they were back then. You know, almost every anime nowadays, there's a, there's a place that streams it. I mean, you have so many options, you know, Crunchy, Funimation... Dicey, or that one thing is called Blue Amazon. Let's just go on Netflix now. Yeah. Well, my thoughts on Toriko, like, I still like it. Like, I want to say it's somewhere between the 20s and 40s for me. Somewhere between there. I know it's, like, kind of picky where I put my things. <laughs> I know, I, I can relate to that. So. Yeah, because I still like it, but I, it's definitely something I need to go back to, like, reread from scratch. And uh, watch from scratch as well, because I like everything about it. <laughs> I don't know. Because I feel like it... Definitely th there's like a lot of little bit of everything. It Probably the problem was just balancing out and then things were really going in a different direction. 
I, I kind of feel that, you know, looking back at the way it's going, maybe we should have tried to end it, like, you know, have the whole final battle, the like Gourmet Eclipse during the food fest. You know, probably should have ended yeah, yeah. Up, had the final battle there, so maybe the anime were right about something, at least. <laughs> maybe not the way they did it, but, you know, at least to yeah, have the final battle really right there. The <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It, it, there's definitely things that could have gone differently. But yeah, I still recommend it, and I still need to, like, review it at some point, and review everything, anime, manga, movies for it. I kind of wish that Funimation at least got movie 2, uh, you know, for more characters, and then, you know, to dub it, the Blu-ray treatment, or whatever. But I, I still have this faint hope that maybe Dragon Ball Super will have another Toriko cameo. I'm really hoping for that to actually happen, even though it's not Toriyama-related, like, like Dr. Slump. But, you know, you never know with the way Toei thinks. I, I do feel they're going to try to do another One Piece Dragon Ball 1 in the future. Yeah, they're yeah they're big. Because Toriko was like... Uh, I guess I'll end it with this now. Is that Toriko, like... Like what you guys were saying earlier, that it looked like Toriko was a contender for the big three. You know, for that. But I also feel that in terms of Toei's lineup, Toriko actually should have been the next one to to grab the torch. But Luffy wouldn't let go. Because, um, take it, yeah, yeah, because taking it I mean, back, could have yeah, because taking it back, I guess you got Mazinger Z for the 70s, maybe, or Captain Harlock for the 70s, because, you know, that was Toei also. In the 80s, it was Kenshiro, well, and actually, no, 80s, it was Kinnika Man first, then it was Kenshiro, then it was Seiya, in the 90s, it was Dragon Ball with Goku, late 90s, early 2000s, it was Luffy, and then Toriko was next in line, but... Luffy didn't want to let go of it. Phil, yeah. <laughs> Reminds me of my brother. <laughs> yeah, I still like Toriko, but it's a shame for better or worse, like it did what it did. Actually, did Toriko get like a game by itself? I had a couple of DS games. I think it did. Yeah. Yeah, there was a couple of them, like about three or four. But yeah, there were mostly Nintendo DS, oh, and then. Yeah, the biggest one was J-Star's appearance where he was one of the big uh, advertised characters along with Luffy, Goku, Naruto, and Kenshin. Like, How, like, the singer who did the openings for the Toriko anime also collaborated with the J-Star's uh, song. Yeah. Theme song. And, then, and, and that was with the... Op- and that was with the opening singers for Dragon Ball Z and for One Piece, too. Yeah, yeah, and Toriko was voiced by Nubei, because I like... <laughs> Toriko came and gone, and let's see like if people remember this in the next 10 years. <laughs> I hope they will. I mean, there's some parts, I think, that are noteworthy. I don't know, like, oh, I guess we have to see what Shima Buruko does in the next. Yeah, so... Once my... Kipitama... And that's like a whole generation old, but I still love these. Yeah, yeah, but ten, pretty much the is done. Yeah. For, pretty much once Kintama finishes, because Kintama currently is its final anime run. And, oh uh, yeah, so last word here is the Toriko, recent Toriko volumes. Volume 37 comes out in February 7th. Volume 38 comes out in May 2nd, so I'm not sure where the other ones come out, but... It's pretty much safe to say that the Toriko manga will finally be released in America by 2018 in total. Ugly. Yeah, so the big question is whether the whether the anime will ever get picked up again, because the Gray Man only got picked up because of the new anime that came out for it that continued the story. So Isn't D Gray Man also just coming back as a manga or? Yeah, that too. Yeah. Because of hiatuses and well not hiatuses exactly, it was because of uh um, some publishing issues. That's all I know. But yeah, that wraps it up for Toriko. So I guess in the comment section, just tell us how do you feel about Toriko, and then yeah, and I guess also you have any suggestions for other series to talk about with other people, you know, like a podcast like this one. Then type it in the comments. Everyone, say your goodbyes. Adios. Goodbye and. Mm-hmm. Goshiso sama deshita. Yeah. What was the thing they say? Itadakimasu. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the food. <laughs>